Anyhow, instead of running through the details of the week, we'll just go right into Sunday school. <laughs> But we're, we're into a section, uh, I'm going to show you what we studied last time because I told you at the end of class that there was one more thing uh, that I wanted to tie in to that study and it's really just proving something I said to you uh, for the sake of the reality uh, of what we are, are looking at here. The, uh, and the, the outline, I put it back on the board it's good for two reasons. You can see where we're at and, and uh, what we, we're studying amazing Bible prophecies, but one of the things is we're following how Babylon and Jerusalem is a tale of two cities that run from Genesis all the way to Revelation. And uh, as we were going through that, we're picking up some more of those amazing prophecies. And we're at the point where uh, God had just given over uh, Jerusalem back over to Babylon and uh, and so we're at the end of 2 Kings, 2 Chronicles is when uh, Israel, after they became a nation, that, that God gave them, because of their idolatry, into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. And it'll be a real short study, I think, to, to show that after 70 years of captivity, they go from Babylon back to Jerusalem, which is then going to uh, lead them right into the New Testament days, where the Lord begins to warn them that they're going to have to flee Jerusalem again. And when you read the book of Revelation, you find out it's Babylon who's going to conquer them until Jesus Christ returns and sets up his, his kingdom in Jerusalem. And it'll go from Babylon back to Jerusalem again. So we're, we're at this point here, going into this point here. And I put, the, put it on the board because I want to be able to write on this side as well. And eventually i got to erase it because I want to put a timeline up there so you can actually see this on a timeline. Because where we're at, going from here to here, this is the time the song, the minor prophets, the, or even the prophets and the minor prophets, are all raised up. They were forecasting that God's going to give Israel into the hand of Babylon, but that they would go through a restoration. And what's amazing is everything that they say about, the, about Israel coming back and being restored again to Jerusalem is really has a double prophecy, a historic prophecy that, that took place in time past, but the prophets spoke about a final restoration back to Jerusalem, which is down here with the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you'll see that today, and because of that, we're into that time the prophets, they're prophesying these events and also talking about these events that you talk about amazing Bible prophecies. We're more concerned with the ones that took place historically. But they do have, you know, everyone wants to study Bible prophecy that hasn't been fulfilled, and that's not really our study. But the ones that have been fulfilled, I mean, they're just going to, there's going to be a bunch of them right now that we're going to go into that are just absolutely astounding. And, uh, and if you know your Bible, then, then they can mean something to you. If you don't know your Bible, they don't, don't astound you too much. So, the, so we're going to back up here in Kings, and in in 2 Kings 24 is when, God gave Jerusalem over to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. If you could just kind of look down in verse uh, uh, 11, it says, And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came against the city, and his servants did beseech it, and Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, went out. And, and, and so there's three different sieges that Nebuchadnezzar came up and, and took the city three different times. The last time he did it is in chapter 25 here, and he destroys the city at that time. Uh, destroys the temple and everything. Uh, and the first two times, he's actually carrying groups of people away captive. And uh, the first time he does it, one of the people that get carried away captive is Daniel. And the second time he does it, Ezekiel uh, is carried away captive. And, and so they, they write it from, from a captive point of view, uh, their prophecies. Uh, but what I want to do in this chapter, go back to verse 2 of chapter 24. It says, And the Lord sent against him bands of the Chaldeans, and bands of Syrian, and bands of the Moabites, and bands of the children of Ammon, and sent them against Judah to destroy it. Uh, and Judah is the, the southern part of, of the nation of Israel, the last two tribes left that had the throne of David, that had the temple in it, where Jerusalem's at, the capital of, of the nation of Israel. And so he, he allows all these people led by Nebuchadnezzar up against them. But he did it, it says, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servants, the prophets. 
that this didn't happen as a, a, a surprise or didn't have to happen as a surprise to the people of Judah. In fact, there's when you read different passages like in Jeremiah, that if you believe God's word, you'd get out of Jerusalem. And if like the first siege, Nebuchadnezzar takes people captive, you'd say, hey, take me. Because you want to get out of Jerusalem because when the destruction comes, there's going to be death. <laughs> and, uh, and, and even when he besieges it, he surrounds it. You can't get any food or water in there and people are dying of hunger and everything else. So the prophets are saying, God's delivering you over. Don't fight it and go to Babylon and God will preserve you. And so someone like Daniel, he's preserved there in Babylon. But so, so if you believe God's word, you'd go. The people who weren't believing God's word, you'll see in the book of Jeremiah, they were believing false prophets. And, uh, oh, no, God wouldn't do this to us and, and so forth. But the point is, is this is what's prophesied. Now, what we did is we backed up. Go back to chapter uh, 18 of 2 Kings. And if, if you just recall, if like in verse 13, it says, In the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, come up against the fenced cities of Judah and took them. And then in verse 17, there's this Rabshanki guy who is now standing there saying, Don't think your God's going to protect you. Hezekiah is not going to save you. I've conquered all these other people in the name of, the, of, of uh, um, Sennacherib, king of Assyria and uh, surrender unto me. And the point is, is we, when we looked at that, is, is Judah wasn't afraid of Babylon. They were afraid of Assyria. And, and a miraculous deliverance comes. Isaiah the prophet shows up here. Look at chapter 19, verse 6. And Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall ye say unto your master, Thus saith the Lord, Be not afraid of the words nor, nor, uh, which thou hast heard, which the servant of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. So don't worry about this guy. And then, then over in verse 20, Isaiah comes back and it says, Then Isaiah the son of Amos sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. And then he prophesies how these people are going to die, and 185,000 of his troops die overnight, and he runs home to Assyria and then gets assassinated when he gets back. So, uh, so here the, they were fearing Assyria, and God said, Don't worry about Assyria. But then when you get over to chapter 20, in verse 1, it says, In those days Hezekiah was sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him, and if you remember our study, God, he, Hezekiah cried like a baby, and, and so God says, God, go tell Hezekiah, I'll give him 15 more years. <laughs> and, uh, and so God gives Hezekiah 15 more years, and in those 15 more years, uh, the king of Babylon sent ambassadors over to to Hezekiah because he heard he was sick and all and Hezekiah treated them and all oh, these people are from a far country they're nice they're allies he shows them all the treasures of the house all his riches and then Isaiah comes to Hezekiah and says well, what did you show them and he said I showed them everything and he and then he prophesied and says they're gonna take it all so when when it said back there that that this happened, that when, when Babylon conquered Jerusalem and Judea there, that it happened according to the word of the prophets. Here it was prophesied by Isaiah in the days of Hezekiah. Now what I told you last, year, last week is that was 125 years before it happened. I just want to show you that. So I knew we didn't have the time last week to see that, but I wanted to show it to you. So we know from this that it's right after the time Hezekiah is told he's got 15 years to live that he was sick and so Babylon sent ambassadors. So it must have been right at the time where he just got over his sickness that the ambassador showed up. So under the reign of Hezekiah, Isaiah shows up and Hezekiah has 15 years that he's going to reign yet, right? So after him, come over to chapter 21 in verse 1. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem, and then tells his mother's name. So Manasseh, he's at, that's his son, he reigns 55 years, and, and, and then eventually he dies. You come over to verse 19, and it says, um, Ammon was 20 and 2 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 2 years in Jerusalem, and then gives his mother's name. 
So he reigns two more years. Uh, you come down to verse uh, chapter 22, verse 1. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned thirty and one years in Jerusalem. So Josiah now, thirty-one years, he reigns. Now, by the way, that's when Jeremiah is finally, he's a young man just showing up at this time. Isaiah prophesied before Jeremiah. And that, those are important things that we'll put on our timeline perhaps next week. Um, Come over to cha uh, chapter 23, verse 31. It says, And Jehoahaz was twenty and three years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. Percentage-wise, what is three months? Yeah. I just want to make it easy for us. So I just put it over here. That's one-fourth of a year. Everyone, we're writing everybody else by year, but this guy only reigns three months. Verse 36 says, Jehoiakim was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. So now we got him reigning eleven years, Jehoiakim. Uh, verse uh, 8 of chapter 24 says, Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem, there's another three months. <laughs> so he actually does another one quarter year. And then we finally get to the last king in chapter 24, verse, 20, uh, verse 17. It says, and the king of Babylon made uh, Mataniah his father's brother king in his stead and changed his name to Zedekiah. Zedekiah was twenty and one years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem and gives his mother's name, so another eleven years. Do I got all of them in there? 10, 13, 14, 15. That makes a half, right? Uh, and then we got seven, ten, eleven, twelve. Since the time Isaiah went to Hezekiah and told him Babylon is going to be the one that's going to come and destroy and take the riches of Jerusalem away, it was 125 years before it happened. Now, think about 125 years. That would be like the day Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln would predict that, uh, that, that uh, President Bush would invade Iraq. If you go back 125 years from like today, that's 1988. What happened in 1988? Well, during, what's that? A prediction. What is? A prediction. Oh, prediction, yeah. But I, I'm just trying to associate what, where we are. That's the day, you know, they already arrested Billy the Kid and, uh, and he escaped and was on the run and they killed him and then Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday showed a... Eight, Correct me. I thought I said 1888. 1888 goes back to, to those days. Uh, there's another analogy. I forget which other one I thought about. Oh, by the way, that's right around the year that the French gave us the, uh, the Statue of Liberty. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, can you imagine someone back then predicting that that there would be a bombing at the Boston Marathon this year. I mean, I mean, just way beyond the possibility. That's why, see, Hezekiah wasn't even thinking about Babylon as even being an enemy. They're way off in the east. No one's ever heard of Babylon. They're not a major power. But in, within 125 years, they became such a major power, they conquered Assyria, all those other lands, brought them against Israel, and then conquered Israel, like Isaiah told Jeremiah 125 years before it happened. 25 and a half <laughs> years before it happened. That, you know, people, you read things like this, and you just read that verse 24, chapter 24, verse 2, according to the word Lord that he spoke by the prophets. And, and, and it's, that's plural. We're just looking at one prophet. All those prophets were saying these things were going to happen. And you can identify when those different prophets prophesied. But we read that because it's already fulfilled prophecy and we don't think anything about it. But that's absolutely amazing. 
And, and here they're worried about Assyria or Egypt. God said, don't worry about them. <laughs> Here's the guy that's going to get you. And he tells them way ahead of time, and it happens just like God said. So uh, I want you to see it, you know, just from, instead of me just saying that, I want you to see that and, and, uh, so that you could see the benefit of it. Now, go with me to Isaiah in chapter 36. A lot of people have trouble with the prophet Isaiah because the prophecies in Isaiah are so accurate that people just, critics of the Bible, but like historians that study the Bible from an intellectual point of view rather than realizing it's God's holy word. <laughs> when they come to the book of Isaiah, they don't know what to do with this guy because he's so accurate in his prophecies that, that they just say, well, no, he couldn't have lived 125 years before it happened because it's, you know, they just can't give credit that, that he's a prophet. He's not, he's not a man speaking on his own. Uh, he's a prophet of God. The reason I have you back here is, you'll, you'll recognize some of these things. Uh, in chapter 36, verse 1, it says, It came to pass in, in the, in the four, 14th year of King Hezekiah that Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all, all the defense cities of Judah and took them. Oh, and look, verse 4, there's that Rabshakeh guy. So, uh, it, you know, chapter 36 is the same as back there in, in uh, 2 Kings 18. And Isaiah showed up back there. Well, not only is it written in the kings that are keeping a record of, of the kings, that, the things that Hezekiah faced and the decisions he had to make and the problems he faced, but Isaiah the prophet was writing them in his book, uh, the book of Isaiah as well. So, so it's in here. You get over to chapter... Uh, well, 37 is, is all about that battle, and, and, then, and then if you go, jump, jump to uh, chapter 27, verse 36. It says, So the angel of the Lord went forth and smote the camp of the Assyrians, a hundred and fourscore and five thousand, and when they rose up in the morning, behold, they were dead corpses. <laughs> there, that, that's... 37, 36. Yeah. 30, man, lie, what's wrong with me? Keep doing that. <laughs> Just think, someone's got to listen to this on tape. <laughs> 36, uh, 37, verse 26, 36. And, uh, and anyhow, I, I'm just pointing out to you that it's matching the things that we said in the book of, of Kings there. Uh, chapter 38, verse 1. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him. Well, there's that 15 years that God gave him. And then if you just read on, it's all about how, uh, like in chapter 39, verse 1, at that time, Murdoch Bel Beldadon, the son of Beldadon, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah. And there's the ambassadors coming to Hezekiah. And, and then as a result of that, the, uh, the, the warning by Isaiah that, Babylon is going to destroy Jerusalem. Now, so you see how that matches. And, and that brings us to the place where Babylon is, that Jerusalem is given over to the hands of Babylon. Look at Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort ye my people, saith the Lord. Now, the last thing Isaiah said is Babylon's going to destroy. And it's 125 years before it happened that Babylon is going to destroy Jerusalem. Then he says, Comfort ye my people, saith God. So there's, there's going to be hope. See, look up to here. There's going to be a restoration. They're going to go from Babylon back to Jerusalem. But Isaiah's not talking about this Babylon back to Jerusalem. He's talking about this Babylon back to Jerusalem. Watch. Comfort ye my people, saith God, speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. She hath received of the Lord, uh, Lord's hand double of all her sins. Not only this judgment back here, there's this judgment back here, and now there's going to be a restoration. Double. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Who's that voice in the wilderness? That's John the Baptist. Uh, uh, verse 6. Uh, 
the voice said cry and he said what shall I cry all flesh is grass and and uh, and all the, the the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field the grass withereth the flower fadeth because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it surely the people is grass the grass withereth the flower fadeth but the word of the Lord standeth forever O Zion that bringeth glad tidings uh, get thee up into the high mountains, O Jerusalem, that bringeth good tidings. Lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it, lift it up, be not afraid. Uh, say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord will come with strong hand, with, a, with his army, uh, yeah, with his arm shall rule and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, his work is before him. Behold your God, come, and he's going to come and rule. John the Baptist begins to speak about the Lord coming, but the fulfillment of John the Baptist is in the second coming of Jesus Christ. They were preaching the kingdom of heaven's at hand. The kingdom of heaven comes at the second coming of Jesus Christ. When John was introducing Jesus Christ, they're saying, Behold your God, and what is God going to do? He's going to save Israel and restore them. And... And so that takes us all the way down to here. I just thought, thought that was amazing that we've jumped all the way from here down to here because these things that happen in the middle, they're just kind of like a historical application. There's, just a, uh, there's two cycles that bring you down to the final fulfillment. And the prophets are not just interested in the historical time. The prophets look forward all the way, not, not just 125 years. They look forward... 700 years plus the 2,000 years of grace. <laughs> they look 2,700 years ahead to the final fulfillment that will, that's yet future to our day, the second coming of Christ. And uh, so the Bible is a very special book. All this happens according to the word of the Lord. What God is going to accomplish in prophecy uh, to the nation of Israel is called prophecy. It happened, he says it before it happens so that you know when it happens that it's of God. It's all been prophesied. Now we'll study the historical part but all of it find, finds its fulfillment in the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, so there's two things to keep in mind. We'll go back, like I said, next week. I want to put a timeline on. But I want you to keep the timeline in your mind as we begin to study some other prophecies. The timeline of, of this, when Hezekiah, when Hezekiah ruled, when Isaiah began to prophesy, or at least prophesy to Hezekiah, and, and when that fulfillment came, and then there's things that are going to take place after they go into captivity that's going to bring us back from Babylon to Jerusalem. That's all recorded in the prophets. So we're moving well beyond the 125 years as we look at additional prophecies. Uh, so keep the timeline in mind. And then, uh, and then always keep in mind how there's both these implications uh, of a final fulfillment that's in the days of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, in fact, go to 2 Chronicles chapter 36. We've been reading it from 2 Kings. The same time period is covered by 2 Chronicles. And, uh, and interestingly, that the Jewish Bible of old days, and probably the Jewish Bible of today, uh, the last book in their Bible is 2 Chronicles. And, uh, and that's interesting because, well, watch how 2 Chronicles ends. Second Chronicles chapter 36. Now I'm not going to read about Nebuchadnezzar coming, conquering Zedekiah and all the rest. But when it's all done, there's like a conclusion in the book of Second Chronicles. And follow along, I'm going to start in verse 15. It says, the Lord, Second Chronicles 36 verse 15. It says, The Lord God of their fathers sent unto them by his messengers, rising up betimes, that is real fast, and sending uh, uh, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. Now see, we're, we, we know that God has the nation of Israel, but we're actually talking about a place on earth that God has concern with. And Jerusalem is that place. And because God had concern for that place and for that people, He was sending messengers. They were rising up quickly and being sent. Verse 16, here's the result of their preaching. But they mocked the messengers of God and despised His words and misused His prophets till, wrath, till the wrath of the Lord arose against His people till there was no remedy. 
God had to judge them. They would not listen. When he, he, he prophesied, told them what's going to happen, they, won't, they wouldn't repent. Therefore he brought unto them the king of the Chaldeans, who slew their young men with the sword in their houses, uh, in the house of their sanctuary, and had no compassion upon young men or maiden or old man, uh, of him that stooped for age, he gave them all into his hand. And all the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king and, and of his princess, all these brought he, he brought to Babylon. And they burned the house of God and break down, that's the temple, and broke down the wall of Jerusalem and burned all the palaces thereof with fire and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof. And when they had escaped from, and, and them that escaped from the sword, carried he away to Babylon, where they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths. For as long as she had laid desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill threescore and ten. So when they were carried away into Babylon, they're going to be there for three score and ten, 70 years, to fulfill her Sabbaths. Which, real interesting then, during the whole days of the kings, first, first kings all the way to second kings, all that, well actually it's, it would start back in second Samuel, that all that time Israel wasn't obeying every seven years, they had to let the land rest. And so God put them into captivity 70 years. If every seven years you're supposed to let the land rest, that means for 490 years they weren't obeying the, the, the Sabbath of the land resting for seven years. So the land's going to rest seven years. God's going to wipe Israel off, put them into captivity 70 years, and, and let that rent land rest. And, and so uh, the, the writer of Chronicles, which is probably Ezra the priest, uh, wrote, wrote these things and not only said that they went into captivity, but said why they went into captivity. But he didn't just say why they went into captivity. He also said in verse 21, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah. So we already talked about Jeremiah showing up on this timeline in the days of Josiah beginning to preach. And Jeremiah, not only did he say, yes, you're going to go into captivity, but you're going to go into captivity for 70 years. Isaiah said you're going into captivity to Babylon. That's certainly verified by Jeremiah over and over and over again. In the, in the book of Jeremiah, I, I think when you run the name Babylon, the Bible will mention Babylon 161 times. 141 times he mentions it in the book of Jeremiah. <laughs> think Jeremiah's got something to say about Babylon? <laughs> he got a whole bunch to say. And, uh, and, 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 that, and that's because in Jeremiah's day, the false prophets were rising up and saying, oh no, God's going to restore us and everything's going to be okay. We don't have to worry about Babylon. And, and so Jeremiah keeps going back over the fact that God is going to judge. Uh, but anyhow, here the writer of Chronicles, now he must live out in the future. This is not so much a prophet, but a prophet did say what was fulfilled already in 2 Chronicles. And that is when they, that Babylon would destroy them and they would go into captivity and that time period in captivity will be 70 years because Jeremiah said it would be and it was fulfilled. And not only was it fulfilled, they were, they were given to Babylon until the kingdom of Persia. Look down in verse 22. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, the word of the Lord, uh, came, uh, that the word of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, and he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom to put, uh, and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, All the kingdoms of the earth hath the, God, the Lord God of heaven given me, and hath charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah, who, uh, who is there among all, the peop all his people. The Lord his God be with him, let him go up. So he's saying, Okay, you're free from captivity. Go back to your land, rebuild the temple. And even it sponsors it, supports it, and everything else. And it all happens according to the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. So in Chronicles, not only do you end with them going into captivity, but you also end with that real quick statement of restoration that took place historically. And that's the end of the Jewish Bible, the Old Testament. Why? Well, John the Baptist shows up in the New Testament, bringing you to the conclusion. That's a fitting close to Israel's history. 
went into captivity, restored, and waiting for the final, captiv uh, the final restoration in the days of John the Baptist. Just unique. Uh, but, but it said it was by Jeremiah. Go to Jeremiah chapter 25. Might want to stop at chapter 1. Now I'm trying... I, didn't, I missed. Queen for, was the queen. Yeah, well, that was is during that, the. Is that, is, that, what, is that where the seven years begin? No. No. S seven years? No, they were in captivity during that time, but it was at the end of that captivity because the king of Persia, or, or it might be even be that after there was a restoration, the ones that stayed in Persia almost got wiped out. Preserve the people. You know, the Agagite comes after the whole nation of Israel. They're going to kill all of Israel. In, is that, what I'm asking is, at what point does the Israel, is the restoration happen? What, 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 the, the, you have Babylon. Yeah, the books that talk about them restored to their land. See, Esther is, is Israel in the land of Persia. But Ezra and Nehemiah is when they come back to the land. Under Ezra, they first come back and start rebuilding the temple. And then years later, Nehemiah comes back and rebuilds that wall around Jerusalem for their protection. So the, the people back to the land is Ezra and Nehemiah. And Esther is talking about how God preserved them during, in, in the, not in their homeland, it, away, when they were carried away, in, but under Persia at that time. Jeremiah chapter 1. And by the way, this is where a whole bunch of prophecies, and I'm still trying to figure out which ones to cover right away and which ones to cover later, because there's a bunch of prophecies that are going to start taking place now. Amazing, fulfilled prophecies, but yet I want to finish our outline. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 1. The word of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, the priest that, uh, that were in Amrath, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Amos, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. So you can figure out where Jeremiah began to prophesy, right? And it came to pass in the, day, in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of jo Josiah, king of Judah, to the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. So Jeremiah, Isaiah's long dead before they ever go into captivity. I, Jeremiah shows up years after Isaiah, begins to prophesy just before the captivity, when the captivity took place, and even a little bit after the captivity. He didn't go to Babylon. He followed him, uh, the, the Jews down to Jerusalem when he told them, don't go there, and they did anyhow. But anyhow, that, you got Jeremiah right at the end, and Jeremiah begins to prophesy. Now we're I'll have to pick up in, verse, in chapter 25 because I've got to read at least 13 verses. If you want to read ahead, read Jeremiah 25. Jeremiah 27 is pretty interesting. Uh, but at least the first 13 verses of Jeremiah 25 and Jeremiah uh, 29. And, and you'll read what was referred to in Chronicles that Jeremiah prophesied. Now we'll read them next week because I want to show you the prophecy. And we've already found out it was already fulfilled. Uh, by what's written in Chronicles, uh, but there's two things. There's something different in chapter 29 than in 25, and uh, we'll, have, we'll just have to pick up there next week. Okay. Got all the history in mind? I'll put the timeline. That'll help you. And uh, that, that way you can at least say, wow, look at that. How many years ahead of time did God say this would happen? And it did. Let's pray. Our God and our Father, we do thank you for our class. Um, it's pretty exciting when we realize that some of the things we read and just skip by, especially the history, and sometimes we just force ourselves to read the Old Testament and, and not pay enough attention to what's taken place, what you forecasted ahead of time, when you said it, when it took place, so that we might realize uh, that your Bible is a very unique book, that you have prophesied things uh, in the past that took place exactly like you said, and even on the time schedule that you laid out and already been fulfilled. So that, uh, that's why we know the future prophecies will happen just like you said. 
But thank you for proving yourself so that we know that we indeed, we indeed do have your, your word and that we can trust it. And we thank you for the age of grace we live in today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.